Good evening, friends. Welcome to Spirit of Life Ministries Wednesday evening Bible study. I would imagine some of you are getting ready for tomorrow, Thanksgiving. What a wonderful thing in our country to celebrate the thank things we can be thankful for. Amen. I have a lot of things to be thankful for. I'm thankful that recently I came through surgery and that everything's going good. Can I get a high five from you? That we're all excited and thankful. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you something that I feel is very important. We finished up our study last week and on the ministry gifts. And tonight, I want to talk about who do you say I am? <clears throat> In 1978, that's 39 years ago, almost 40 years ago, I was in sales management, and I hired a young girl to work for our company. And as I was talking to her about the Lord, some things were said, and a statement was made that she did not believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. And when she said that to me, I felt the Holy Spirit in me leap, and I went, oh, I never had confronted anything like that. And 39 years ago, I knew the Lord, but I didn't know the Word like I do today. So when she had been involved with this group of people, and it's a cult, I started studying. I wanted to know in my number and go get it from there and hear who Jesus really is. There's a lot of teaching out there. And who he is determines who we are in him. You see, only God can save us from our sin. So therefore, if we're expecting Jesus to save us, he has to be God in the flesh. So we're going to go through a lot of scriptures tonight. I hope you have your Bibles in front of you. Because... When you get done, you're going to know who Jesus is. It isn't the first time that happened. After that lady happened, there were other people that confronted me on things. I want you to know I believe in the Trinity. I believe God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are three unique individuals that make up one God. Not three gods, but one in unity making up one God. That's what we believe in our ministry. So tonight, let's find out what the Word of God has to say. Because when you go to the Word, that's the final authority. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's turn to chapter 16 of Matthew. Let's start there. Matthew chapter 16. And we will read verse 15. Matthew 16, 15. But let's start with 13. We'll give a little introduction here. When Jesus came into the course of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now let me tell you why he called himself the Son of Man. He came to be the kinsman redeemer. And in order to be a kinsman redeemer, you had to be born into the Jewish line, and you had to be born in the flesh. That's why Jesus called himself Son of Man. While he worked, walked on the earth, he laid his glory down. But he's asking his disciples, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? In Matthew 16, 13, <clears throat> verse 14. And now the disciples are responding. They said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some, Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So they're telling him what people had to say. And I'm sure different people think about Jesus and have something to say. But Jesus is getting specific. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? In other words, Peter, James, John, all of these, Philip, Bartholomew, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, son of Bar Barona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Jesus is on earth. The Father is in heaven. That Father revealed to Peter who it was. Now the word Christ is the word Christos, which means Messiah. They were waiting for the Messiah to come, to set up a kingdom. And Peter's telling him, you're the Messiah. All right, turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We're learning tonight. Who do you say I am? Not Helen, but who do you say Jesus is? John chapter 1. And we will begin reading at verse 29. Now, John the Baptist was down doing his ministry. And people were coming and they were baptized in water for repentance. The next day, verse 29, John sees Jesus coming unto him and saying, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now that's an interesting statement. How could John the Baptist say that Jesus was before him when Mary got pregnant after Elizabeth got pregnant? Hmm. Makes you wonder what he meant. He was preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest or visibly shown to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, speaking of Jesus. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Oh my goodness, you mean the Holy Spirit <coughs> speaks? Yes. He said unto me, Upon whom? Thou shalt see the Spirit, that's capital S, that means Holy Spirit, descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, John is speaking, and I bore record that this is the Son of God. Now, he's called the Lamb of God, and he's also called the Son of God there. Now, do you know him? As teacher, let's turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Now here's Nicodemus. Nicodemus was watching Jesus. He was a Pharisee. And he came at night to ask Jesus some questions. Why do you think he came at night? He was afraid. That's right. I remember the first time I went to a full gospel church. I'd never been to one before. But I'd heard about it. I wanted to know more about it, but I parked a block away because I didn't want anybody to know. And I sat in the back seat of the church in case I wanted to get up and run out. The same kind of thing was going on with Nicodemus. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, he was a big shot. He was a ruler of the Jews. He was a Pharisee. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher. Come from God. So Jesus is called a teacher here by him. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So he's called a teacher. Turn to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Oh, we're learning tonight. Who do you say that I am? These are different names that were given to Jesus. We're in Revelation chapter 21. We're going to read here in verse 6. He says, And he said unto me, It is done. Wow! That means at the end of the book, it's going to be all over. One of these days and not that far in the future, it'll happen. It is done. I am. There's that I am again. The I am in the Old Testament meant Jehovah. It was such a holy name of God. 
I am Alpha and Omega. That Jesus is saying, I am the beginning and the end. And it says it right after it. The beginning and the end. That's what Alpha means. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega, the last letter. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of water. Life freely. He's called the Alpha and the Omega. Oh, my goodness. He is Lord. Let's turn to John 1, 1. John 1, 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. Are you with me tonight? Give me a high five or an amen or something. Amen. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning, didn't Jesus just say he was the beginning? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh my goodness. Let's see what the word Word means there. That word means Lord. It's Kyrios. In the beginning was the Word. Kyrios. Logos, excuse me, Logos. And Logos is supreme authority. Wow, the supreme authority. He is called the supreme authority. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That's telling us who Jesus was. In the beginning, the Alpha, he was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. Now, some teach that Jesus is the Father and the Holy Spirit. How can you be with somebody other than yourself and not say, with God? I can't say Helen was with Helen. No, Jesus, the Word, was with God. The same was in the beginning with God, verse 2. Wow. So he's called the Word, which is the word Logos. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Praise God. Oh, I get so excited over the names of God because he's real, he's alive, he is wonderful. Amen? Hebrews chapter 5. And we will, we will read verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So what is Jesus? He's our salvation. Oh, what a wonderful thing to know. And in Hebrews 12, 12, look at there. Hebrews 12, 12. The more you study the word, the richer it is. 12, 12 says, make sure I've got the right thing here. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. I guess I wrote the wrong thing down here. And that's, that's error because I'm not perfect. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. In Mark 1.1, 1, 1, let's turn there. Let's go back to Mark. I'll find that verse. I'll give it to you right and make sure it's right here. I'm the author and the finisher because I tell you what. He's the one that gave it to us. He's the one that started it. And he's the one that's going to finish it. Oh, I'm so thankful. And let's see. Author, Hebrews 5, no, 12, 2 is the right verse. 12, 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, the joy set before him, yes, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews 12, 2, instead of 12, 12. In Mark chapter 1, let's turn to Mark chapter 1. I hope you're getting something out of this. I hope you're taking notes. And if you're not, go back and listen to it again so you can have these verses. So when somebody comes to you and tells you that Jesus is somebody other than what he claimed to be, you can say, let's see what the word says. You know, folks, my opinion isn't worth a pound of air. But God's opinion through the word is worth everything. Hello? Mark 1 and 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There he's called the Son of God again. Turn to Matthew 3.17. 
Like I said, your fingers are doing some walking tonight. Matthew 3.17. This is when John the Baptist baptized him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. You see, it had to, he had to be called the son of God because he had to be in the flesh. He laid his glory down, but he was all God and all man. He had to do that in order to be the near kinsman redeemer. And there in Luke chapter 3, Luke chapter 3 and verse 22, it says, let me get the right verse here so we read it. 3.22, it says the same thing, the baptism of Christ. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee am well pleased. Now there's the Trinity. The word Trinity isn't there, but the triune God is there. The Holy Spirit descended in a bodily shape like a dove. A voice came from heaven. And there's Jesus, so all three were right there together. Praise God for that. You see, if you get these scriptures down, you'll never, ever doubt it. In Revelations chapter 19, let's go there. Revelations chapter 19. And we will read verse 16. And he had on his vesture, which is his robe, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Now, that word, Lord of Lords, that word is curios. That's sovereign God. He is sovereign. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful that we have a God that washes away our sin? Oh, through his wonderful blood. And King of Kings, that means he is the King of all kings, over all kings. He's the king of kings. It's written on his robe, and it's written on his thigh. Oh, in the Bible, the word the thigh has an awful lot of meaning. And tonight we won't go into that, but that is a very special place. In John 6.35, let's turn there. John chapter 6 and verse 35. Oh, I love the word of God. And he's teaching here. Let's read verse 32. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, and the Lord give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus says, you have bread. And you know, it must have displeased the Father an awful lot when they didn't like the bread from heaven that fell on the ground in manna. You know, we need to be careful. When God gives us something, we may not think it's the best, but we better be thankful for everything he gives us. In John chapter 5, just back a page, verse 20. Five, chapter 5, verse 20. It says, For the Father loveth the Son, and shows him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. Look at verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. He calls himself the Son. Turn to Isaiah chapter 28, Old Testament. And someone said, why are you using the Old Testament? I want to tell you something. The New Testament is a fulfillment of the Old. The New Testament quoted everything from the Old Testament. That's how we know that it's true. Isaiah 28. Let's look at. Let's call Isaiah 28, 16. I'm on the right page, it helps. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a 
foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So Jesus is called the cornerstone. Turn to 1 Peter 2, 6. That's Old Testament. Let's see what it says in the New Testament. Is it there too? Yes, it is. 1 Peter. And that comes right before 2 Peter. 1 Peter 2, 6. It says, Unto you therefore, quoting Isaiah, which believe me, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Jesus is the cornerstone. Wonderful old song, the cornerstone. You see, when you do building, why is it so important to have a cornerstone? The cornerstone is laid, and everything is built from that. If that corner is crooked, the whole building will be crooked. Ask any builder. That's the first thing laid. They determine where all the walls and everything else is going to go right from that corner. Anybody ever done any building? I guarantee they would attest to that. I see you on there, Jimmy. I know you do some remodeling. I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. He is the cornerstone. Turn to John chapter 20. Now, in this particular verse, Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples, except one had been missing. And the one that was missing was Thomas. And Thomas was like a lot of us. If I don't see it, I'm not going to believe it. Have you ever felt like that? Ah, I don't believe that. i got to see it. See, there's no faith in that. Verse 26, and after eight days... Again, now this is after the resurrection of Jesus. After eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be on you. Think about this now. The doors are shut, but he comes in there. Yes, our glorified bodies can go right through walls. Ah, praise God. What a way to go. Then saith he to Thomas, that's Jesus speaking to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger. And behold my hands, and reach here thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Wow. Can you imagine being in Thomas' shoes? Now he sees the Lord. What does he say to him? Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Oh. So Thomas calls Jesus his God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's you and I. We haven't seen him, but we certainly do believe. In Matthew chapter 1, 23, Matthew 1, 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. See, that's who he is, God with us. My goodness, it's as plain as ever, Jesus. And some would say, oh, well, the spirit was on. No, he was God in the flesh. In John chapter 9, verse 5, John chapter 9, verse 5, he's called the light of the world. Oh, he has so many wonderful names, John chapter 9. 9 verse 5. It says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Praise God. Jesus is the light. In the Song of Solomon, which I love, a lot of people don't understand that book because it's a love story. It's awesome. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. He says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. See, he called himself that. What a wonderful thing to know. Jesus has that wonderful smell of the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. In Revelation chapter 5, are your fingers getting working on? Let me get a high five there. Revelation 5, 5 says, And one of the elders said unto me, 
Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. We sing a lot of Jewish songs in our church. One of them is, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus. Took our chains, broke them, and freed us. But he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. In Revelation 4, let's turn there, and 8, it's right near the same place. It says, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. <laughs> holy, holy, holy. He's called Lord God Almighty. Now the word Lord is kurios. That means supreme authority. The word God is theos, which is supreme deity, very exceeding God. He's not just supreme authority. He's the supreme deity. He is the Lord God Almighty. Oh, what a name. In John chapter 4, 25, he's called the Messiah. Let's turn there. John chapter 4, verse 5. It says, am I in the right book? I might have written, no, excuse me. John chapter 4, verse 25. It says, The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah has come, which is called Christ. When he's come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Whoa! Can you imagine that woman at the well hearing him say, I'm the Messiah. I'm he. Oh! She got so excited she went back to town and told everybody and they came out and had a big revival. My, my, my. He's also called the mighty God in Isaiah 9 verse 6. Turn to Isaiah 9 verse 6. Who do you say I am? Who you say I am determines what happens in your life. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. Who is that, Jesus? Unto us a son, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. See, there it is again. The Mighty God. Wow. In Ephesians chapter 2, and 14, he's called our peace. Oh, such a wonderful thing to know that Jesus is our peace. You ever lose your peace? <laughs> Anybody ever say, and give you peace in my mind? In the verse 14, it says, for he is our peace. That means shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Everything good. Who had made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. In other words, there's no wall between the Jew and the Gentile, the male and the female. Ah, he is our peace. In Luke 2.30, he's called our salvation. Luke 2 and 30. Are you getting something out of this tonight? I hope so. That you'll be able to write down and have forever that you'll have these verses. Luke 2 and 30. It says, For my eyes have seen thy salvation. Wow. Let's go back a little bit. Let's look at verse 25. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. In other words, he was waiting for Messiah to come. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. He was a spirit-filled man. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now that word Christ means Messiah. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. In other words, the Holy Spirit led him in there. And when the parents, as Jesus' parents, brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, 
for my eyes have seen thy salvation. So Jesus is called salvation. And that word salvation there means deliverer. Aren't you glad he's delivered us from our sins? In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 4. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Praise God. Pages flipping. In 2 Timothy, chapter 4, and verse 8, it says, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Are you looking forward to his appearing? Amen. Jesus is called right there the righteous judge. Oh, man. Sometimes we judge unrighteously, but his, his name is called righteous judge. What were we studying? We're studying. Who do you say I am? I'm so thankful that I studied this out so I know who Jesus is. In John chapter, in 1 John chapter 4, turn there. 1 John chapter 4, it says in verse 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So who is the Savior? Jesus Christ. He is the Son. He is our Savior. In John chapter 11, regular John, go back there, John chapter 10, verse 11. Are you getting the Bible worn out tonight? I hope so. Should be smoke coming off of it with all the different verses. John oh, chapter 10, <laughs> verse 11. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So he's calling himself the good shepherd. And in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9, he is the source of eternal salvation. Oh, I'm so glad that salvation is eternal. Aren't you glad? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. It says, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. And in John 1, 1, we read that. He's the Logos, the Word of God. In Proverbs chapter 18, Proverbs chapter 18. Uh, Proverbs can teach us so many things. Proverbs chapter 18. In verse 24, it says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is our friend. I love the little song, I am a friend of God. Oh, it's so good. And in Revelation, excuse me, and in John chapter 15, John chapter 15. Yes, we're going through just a little bit more here and we'll be finished, but I want you to understand and know without a shadow of a doubt who Jesus says he is. John 15, verse 14. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So, when we do what God wants us to do, he calls us friends. What did he call himself? In John 8, 58, he said that before Abraham was, I am. Thus declaring, himself to be the I am, or Jehovah, or Yahweh. He is Jesus, all God, all man, Savior of the world, King of kings, Lord of lords, the word that made, became flesh, the righteous judge, the shepherd. He is Lord God Almighty. Is he all of these to you? Is he some of these to you? Do you know him? What do you call him? I call him my Lord and Savior. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word that is so rich, so powerful. I thank you for your word that enlightens us, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Thank you, Lord, that as we study your word, we find out the truth. And the truth sets us free. I ask tonight that you bless each one watching. 
cause us to grow, cause us to know, and cause us to share the truth with others. God bless you. Have a blessed Thanksgiving tonight.